Wait, what's, what's going on? Where's the other? Yes, it certainly is. Get the possession. Ah, so fast. Hi. Hey. I put my best business business lady suit on today this evening. Uh, I want to talk to you today about complaining. I'm gonna put like a big old. No. Complain. All right. So <laughs> make that joke once. Get it out of your system, and then let's move the fuck on. All right. You good? Complaints. All right. I have nothing to complain about. All right. Fucking hell. Now, I love a good scroll, I spend a lot of time on social media, actively follow things like public freakout or off my chest, which is just like people on Reddit getting stuff off their chest. <laughs> I live for that kind of content because I like to read the comments. I, you know, I will go to any drama slash situation on the internet and I will just like, we all, you know, in the comments reading. Anyway, basically this week I was spending, I was going to do an episode on the dictator Dan hashtag and trying to get to like the root of like who these people are and why and how and like what's going on. Like I watched the press conference uh, two days ago where the reporters were like, but why, but why? They were like, They're like children. Yeah. Why do I have to go to bed? Cause you fucking have to. Yeah. And I like, I felt myself being irritated at the complaining. Then it got to me where I was thinking like, why am I so irritated by complaining and what is complaining? So in today's episode, instead of getting like hectic political and like not talking about stuff that we can really like get to the root of, we're gonna do a very cursory overview of what exactly is complaining and why. All right, complaining, I feel like it's one of those terms that I like, I use liberally, we talk about it day to day, but when I really stopped to think about it, I couldn't define it for myself. And that's always one of those terms where it's like, if you can't define it for yourself, there's probably a little bit more there going on. Like, all good <laughs> You might not know what the yeah, fuck you're talking about. Yeah, maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So like, off the cuff, you haven't been, you didn't get told what this episode was. Like, what do you reckon complaining is? Complaining, I reckon, is the act of bemoaning your circumstances or situation. What's well, more well, fancy than the actual definition? I started doing research for this and it's one of those terms that's used really, really, really violently differently by different fields. So there's a whole area of like legal complaint. We ain't talking about that. We are talking about the general day-to-day -day, whingy complainy Civilian blah, 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 right? So like, uh, how do you view people like, do you call other people complainers and how do you view them just generally? I don't know that I call people complainers. Oh yeah, there's Jerry, he's a real complainer. Um, but do you have any friends where you're like, oh, complaining? Like people who are like, or have you ever cut people out yes, of your life for being like mad but complaining? I probably use less flattering terminology what do you, than like, complainers. Like, like, Nazi, like what do you mean? Like, but you know, when someone complains heaps, like if you know someone who all they do, like say at your workplace, yeah. someone who just fucking complains yes, about Yes, that's work, what I'm talking about. How just you, constantly complains the about the place you're always in. And But I'm not like they're such a complainer. I usually go, it's, oh my God, Steve is such a fucking bitch. Yeah. All he does sure. is fucking whine about this job and it makes me hate it even more than I do because right. now I'm folding Steve into my hatred of the job. Because what I want to get at the heart is, is what I was struggling with this week is I'm like, why am I having such a negative response to other people's negative responses? Like, you mean instead of a compassionate right, response of, oh, you poor not, darling, I'm so sorry. I don't sorry. know. I guess it was just an interesting, like it's such a visceral response to the negativity and I've actually figured out why so we'll, we'll get there right. but I guess like uh, one thing I know that I don't want to even like we're not going down the path like I'm not all toxic positivity like I don't think you should have to like have Yay! no positive feelings that's not at all what we're getting at positive vibes only everyone when I was researching this I did find like uh, a lot of self-help people who were distinguishing between complaining and criticism uh, they kind of seem to liberally just define it for themselves. So some people suggested complaints are looking at the action while whereas criticism is looking at the whole person. And then other people, now I've got a few clips that I want to share with you. This is, we're going to look at an excellent clip from uh, Whitney, Whitney on the weekends. You're going to love it. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Weekends with Whitney. Well, we let's spend are a weekend with Whitney. in the studio this morning. I love it. <laughs> do you, Nikki? Whitney, it's great. You've been wanting to do this. I have. I think I match. You do. Of. You do match. You pull out. <laughs> well, you won't hear any complaining from me. We and that's the buzz. That's today's subject, which is so important for all of us. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of complaining. Whitney, so am I. But can I just start with a great quote? Please. Abraham Lincoln. Okay. He said, instead of complaining about a rose bush that has 
that has thorns, rejoice that there's a thorn bush that has roses. Mm. Do you hear the perspective? Mm -hmm. Just a different way of seeing things. And he basically goes on to be like, if someone, if you order a steak, a uh, medium rare, which I think is the meat, the pinky one. Yes, that's the right? pinky one, medium rare. I think you'll find that's the proper way okay, to cook sure. a steak. Uh, if you order your steak medium rare and it comes cooked, like too cooked. Medium? Get yeah. the fuck out that's of here. That's fine to complain because that's discerning complaint. Whereas I'm like, when I hear that, I'm like, shut the fuck up, you whiny bitch. Now, again, where is my negativity coming from? So we'll get to that. But I, I Your also, intolerance of intolerance. Yeah, my intolerance of tolerance. Um, while I was researching this, I also found the actual perfect video. Now, this is um, maybe the greatest video of you on YouTube of all time. Oh, there's a stiff competition with all <laughs> our awesome episodes of social distancing on there. What is the difference between complaint and criticism? Complaint is a specific statement of anger, displeasure, distress, or other negativity. A complaint shows you do not like something. Criticism is more specific. It is more global. It may have blaming in it. I like how he actively framed to get his dick in. Take a look at a valid complaint. And then I drove everyone home in the carpool, we got a flat tire, and I prepared it, everyone was impressed. That was my day. I'm very upset you didn't ask me about my day. We talked about yours all through dinner. Compare the same complaint as a criticism. And after that, I drove all the people in the carpool home, we got a flat tire, and uh, I fixed it, everyone was impressed again. That was my day. I I'm glad, I couldn't tell you enough about it. Great, but you never show any interest in my work. You just don't care about me. It's not rational to ignore the emotional response your message generates. In another video, I will show you some defenses. But before that, I want to show you what contempt looks like. Thank you for choosing Rational Therapy and Recovery. Okay, so that obviously wow, is... Wow, that plaid skeleton had some valuable lessons that to was teach the us. Perfect, isn't that the perfect, the perfect YouTube video? So what I would like to do now... Are you wrong? No, <laughs> absolutely. I think we should try to execute some of those. Like, I think we need to hold our hands like this. And I think we need to do a... a I'm holding my drink, and I don't like it when you make me put my drink down. Okay. It makes me feel like you've I'll, got a problem with my drinking, I'll which hold, is fine. I'll hold my hands in a cool shape, and you will try to do that lesson that we just taught. So teach me back what it was, because I forgot to listen. Yeah. Yeah, so I think what the plaid skeleton was trying to say was that in a complaint you raise an issue that is a serious concern that has merit in confronting and resolving for the sake of the relationship. But when you phrase it as a criticism, there's a sort of baked in attack in there that's more likely to make the listener defensive, at which point you are going to struggle to make any progress because part of being defensive is making yourself resistant to having your position changed and your ideas influenced. Holy shit, can I copy your essay? Because I did not understand what he was saying. Bam! That's exactly- that's because you don't listen. I don't listen. No, that's right. a criticism. Shall, shall yeah. we do a role play now where you do a criticism and I'll do a complaint or vice versa or however that should work? Alright, so if I was going to say- this. Um, well, no, because he was only doing that when he was explaining, not in the role I play. In the role play, he sat awkwardly side on. Um, but I'm going to be the wife because I'm going to be lodging the complaint and the criticism. Okay. So, in the form of a complaint, I would say, I showed you cool skeleton man, but I'm, I feel like you didn't get his messages. No, I don't listen. No, and as a criticism, I would say, you never listen. That's why when Skeleton Man was talking, you didn't take any of the wisdom he was putting Fuck out. Fuck you. Yeah. Oof. Oh, what a difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> skeleton I've man. learned something today. That Skeleton Man really knew what he was talking about. Thank you, William Weber, 17 subscribers. Finally, we are the Goliath when it comes to... Maybe we can... You Let us give you a leg up, Will. <laughs> Let us help you up. One day you'll have 82 subscribers. I, I, 84. 84. I, uh... Bam! I, I gave that a, a thumbs up. <laughs> That's mean. Well, I think it was good. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it was, was good. Okay. Yeah, better technology than we had. Kind of had a fucking green screen seven years ago. Yeah, but I wouldn't have used it if it looked like that. I would have just... How horrible did his home about, look? He looked that he like was better synth off waves. with those lasers. He was synthwave. Yeah, but look, you can only do that vaporwave shit if it's ironic and not just... Um... Really? Yes. It's not earnest vaporwave. I made it look as good the as I could. The flight of the navigator isn't synthwave, it's just wave. 
They were just trying to make the coolest looking film ever. And, and they did succeed. they? <laughs> did we do that? From Miriam Webster and other online dictionaries, because who has the actual one, it is uh, complaining is the expression of dissatisfaction or annoyance about something. Usually, your wife. Because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, am I right? Am I right? No, I'm not. All right. Other studies have pointed out that there must be a complaint threshold. Now, I think this is where the irritation comes from. Because what I'm. Like, no, 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 no. It's that right. thing of like when some people are complaining about stuff and you're like, ugh. Like you were talking about how your you friend. You stop taking it in. Yeah. Because it's like for you, the complaint. Like if someone's complaining about, you know, living somewhere crazy where there's like no government and no money or no food or whatever, you're like, Yes, that's not really a complaint. That's like who am I working with? Who's thing. from like the bad? I don't know. Whatever. But like, if you are just complaining about like my pencil is broken or something every day, and you're get a new pencil, get dickhead. a new pencil, pencil Sylvester or whatever the guy's name is, pencil Vester. Get out of here with your reference. <laughs> uh, so this is a thing that's called a complaint threshold, and it must be reached before someone decides to grumble. Okay, so this is the level where you're like. Usually you'll just like let it slide. You'll just be like, oh, fuck. Oh, look fair. Who, who doesn't hate getting Ooh. stuck in traffic? So the complaint threshold's kind of like where the level you got to get to in order before you say some shit. Where you start complaining verbally to other people. Oh, but is that where you just go, shut up, Karen! If a complaint happens in a forest and nobody's around to hear it, does it really happen? <laughs> was it lodged? Yeah, was it lodged? Was the complaint lodged? Um, so basically one uh, complaint threshold is still being studied, but one of the facets of it is this thing called locus of control which is how much a person a person has how much control a person feels like they have uh, in any given situation so i think the lack of control so if you're at like an airport we all complain all the time because you have no fucking control is it one of those things where you know the pat response ends up being it is what it is yeah i think which so. basically means i cannot hey, help sarah, you in sarah. this you're yeah you're you're like oh my dick is on fire and um, I'm in eternal suffering every day of my life and the dog's like, well, it is what it is. Exactly. What is it then? Is it fucked? Is that, is that what it is? It's then fucked, fucked is it yeah. fucked? I yeah. think often like, it's like, fucked, it is fucked. <laughs> then don't get me wrong too, again, we aren't making like a moral judgment on the benefit or negative, like the positive, oh, yeah. like the utilitarian nature of complaining. Like obviously Means we complain all the time. Like it's, it's like, it's like uh, you're a kettle and you're letting off steam. You're kind of just like, fuck this. I fucking hate this. Oh yeah. It's there's a threshold, right? like, probably the locus of <laughs> control, the locus of control. But there's a threshold where you go from, it's just letting off steam at work to your entire discourse revolves around you're complaining about this yes. place, but you never fix it, and all I got to do is hear you complaining. What I was, and I can't, I can't stand I, no more. I think what I was frustrated about myself to this, well, this week was like I was, like this episode was going to end up being complaining about complaining, which is not, I hope, probably what. We're oh doing anyway. shit, it's happening! Right, but it's it's that thing of like I'm like I love complaining. I consider myself a fairly oh, a complaining complain. person. We like a good complain, but then when I see it in other people, I'm like, oh, shut up with you complaining. Like even though I'm like that's a perfectly Keep valid down, reason to complain. Sick of hearing it. Okay, yeah. so uh, turns out this is probably why we have such a visceral response to complaining. Turns out complaining has negative consequences for our fucking mental health. Ah, oh, here we go. No. Oh, mental health. It turns can out actually... toxic positivity is the way to go. Yeah, you gotta be toxically positive. So <laughs> It actually can rewire our brains for negativity. Repeated thoughts from form a bridge to expedite the passage of information. And so as you complain over and over again, it gets easier and more ingrained <sighs> of a thought process, which finally becomes a habit of negativity. You are making neural pathways of misery and complaining yes. that you can fall into. It's like a fucking groove so a record and you drop into it easier and easier each time. That's a beautiful uh, a metaphor. metaphor. Well, doesn't yeah. it make you uh, like it reframes your friend at work who is like super annoying who complains all the time because like they've just rewired their neural pathways to be the most negative kind. Of oh yeah, they're in a trap. It's like um, I always bring this up with no real research and I certainly <laughs> don't cite any studies. Anytime as a, any, as a doctor, uh, anytime anyone sort of recommends one of those catharsis services, like one of those things where you can. Uh, yeah, you pay money, money and you go smash a TV to pieces with a hammer mm. and it lets off steam and I'm like steam. actually the reinforce the re repetition of those sort of angry behaviors yes. actually reinforces your capacity to lose your temper and makes it easier ergo catharsis not always a practical no. pathway to mental wellness 
Okay. It doesn't stop me from losing my fucking temper all the time. You raise an excellent point. So complaining obviously kind of feels good. Like it feels like there's something cathartic or it's like a big poo. Again, really it's like a big like a taking a big big, a big nasty big, poo. poo. Uh, so <laughs> a 1996 study from Stanford University, which is like a hundred years ago, which is crazy, uh, showed that stress from complaining can actually cause the hippocampus, which is responsible for a lot of problem solving, to shrink. Complaining releases fucking cortisol, which is the good old stress hormone, which is probably why it feels kind of so intense or immense. Give me some of that cortisol yeah. hit. High levels of cortisol over long periods of time uh, actually has a thing that creates a syndrome called, and this is gonna make you know how good the syndrome is, it's called Cushing syndrome. Peter Cushing syndrome? Exactly. Excellent. Check out the symptoms of that shit. Too much cortisol can produce some of the hallmark signs of Cushing syndrome. A fatty hump between your shoulders, uh, a rounded face, and pink or purple stretch marks on your skin. Cushing syndrome can also be a result, uh, can also result in high blood pressure, bone loss, like just full on, like your leg bones just fly out. <laughs> Makes you ugly and squishy. <laughs> on occasion, type, and on occasion type two diabetes. Is that why serial complainers often look like blobfishes? Is that what happens? Well, have you read the twits? Yes. And there's that thing of just like the misery and, yeah. it makes its way outside and I, your body. Again, like I don't know why are we so handsome when we complain. It's our much. relentless positivity has made us beautiful. I mean, every day we do ask, "What was your favorite thing that happened today?" And I think maybe that's balancing out all the poison, toxic negativity that yeah, we've does got it. going on. That yeah, that one sentence. Yeah, didn't kill myself. Okay, Yet. so. I think that maybe it's those physiological responses of, to negativity that is like why I view other people's negativity as annoying. Like it's because their misery is manifesting it, on their stupid faces. And it's having a problem, it, then it, and then it, it's catching, like you catch the negativity. Because it's, if I'm annoyed, then I'm being, I'm complaining about the complaining, and it's just like a, a never- Well, that is the definition of toxicity, isn't it? It's like, it's so poisonous that it makes you sick too. Yeah, you, you actively push it away, and again, I think that there are totally valuable and like perfectly reasonable reasons to be complaining right now. Things suck. Totally but complaining. But you hit a wall, don't but you? But I'm just trying to get to the bottom of why my natural response to it is like, shut up. Like, that's annoying. Mm. Um, yeah, Alan the Botton, who is that philosopher who writes so easily to understand that basically no one considers him an actual philosopher, even though like maybe he is a little bit, I don't know. He says that there are three ways to complain. There is a thing he calls live fury which comes from a place of extreme vulnerability. Ranting is the least effective way of uh, complaining. No one's gonna listen. Now, I disagree. In this household, we're all about a rant. Yeah, but I don't listen. And I'm pretty sure you're not listening to my ranting Do you have a either. Rant? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Hi, hi, hi. Okay. I'm gonna rant about that later. He Boy, says, are you not gonna hear about I it? I think you'll like this one. He all also right. says that the second one, which is slightly better, but still fucking terrible, is a thing called cold fury. Different to Nick Fury, but cold fury. Uh, this is when one says very little, but hates very deeply and quietly. It sees people withdrawal. It's more of a seething hate. Oh, is that like silent treatment? I Good old so. ST, mate. Hard time. Yep. You ain't hearing nothing from me. Men are always doing the silent treatment. It's very annoying. You know, the cliche is that women I just know, don't do the I, silent that's treatment. I said that. But I, I'm a big fan of the old silent treatment. You do. I fucking drop that shit down on you so hard. And, and I'm all like, uh, Alex, Alex, and you're so Alex. needy for our rabbity discourse that uh, you're How like, you? hey, you're not talking to me. I'm like, damn. I'm neglecting my own desire. And you know what I go? I go and listen to a podcast because that's other people talking and I don't need you anymore. Good thing about silent treatment is even when I'm engaging in silent treatment and executing it, it also you smell like a fart, it so. also tickles my desire for self-harm as well <laughs> because I'm denying my own desire to talk and babble and, and give my hot takes on the universe. But I'm like, silent treatment's hurting everyone. Yeah, silent treatment. No one's talking. Hey, while we're speaking about like general self-hatred, I do think having been in like no relationships ever, that it is pretty normal to have like squibbles. People are acting like if you're not having like a, per like if you watch vegans on YouTube, you'd think that you're supposed to be constantly at sunset eating only like a berry blend and never having fights. I just think that's crazy, personally. Not Fuck crazy pussies. in a bad way. Don't, nah, we mustn't say that, but we do think that it is normal to have arguments. So, you know, go and have a fight. Well, it's certainly normal for us. <laughs> All right, so. Psychology Today, which is the bastion of all things fucking medical and science, said that uh, 
there is a hypothesis that more cheerful folks are less are less likely to or are more likely to complain more mindfully and with a specific goal in mind. So there's a study that basically points to like looking at how cheerful, happy people complain versus like cr curmudgeonly like blobfish complain. Oh, I have a problem with this thing that requires resolvement for me, re resolution for me to move forward as a happy person. Totally. Versus the wallowing in the yeah. oh back at the grind, having a good wine yeah. or the flavor of the month at the moment. Bloody Dan lockdown Andrews. corona. Virus, Dan Andrews. Why Trump, is there a curfew? Whatever and honestly, the, it's the a good looming question. bugbears of our time. Yes. So Bugbear. this ah. is the rough guide based on how happy people complain rough. to how to do a good complaint. Now again, let's not get into the utilitarian nature of complaining, but this is how you have a I good complaint. The very thing we were getting into is the utilitarian nature of complaining. No, because this is about having a good complaint as opposed to a necessary necessity complaint. But we don't need to distinguish between those two things because I think we're gonna get into a philosophical pickle if we do that. So let's just look at what makes a good complaint. We wanna avoid dampening your mood by complaining only rarely, which is obviously impossible. So strike that from the list. All right. Can you do that? Fit. Stop complaining is how you have a good complaint. I suppose that way it's like- Oh, more, to make it special. Yeah, like if you're- That's really like only masturbating once a week or something. I mean, <laughs> no chance of that. Ooh, all right. Next point, complain only in instances where you believe it will affect real and positive change. I mean- Oh, what, I can't do fruitless screaming at the clouds? Have you, uh... The fucking world! That's what a gripe is. That's a very, like, insignificant complaint. A gripe. Sometimes it can be major things like the passage of time, the ravages of age, the fucking patriarchy, capitalism! Like, they're all major this things. This show! This fucking show! Yeah, like, they're all things I can't fix, but they're fairly major. And you do, I bug hear bears, you like, big bug I'll just be like working and I'll take my headphones off for a second and I'll hear you screaming from the other room about it. Because I've dropped a spoon or something. <laughs> it's some catastrophe. I've, you I've do taken. scream a lot. It's like, and it doesn't take much. It's like, and now I take the spoon. Hmm, this <gasps> requires rinsing. Well, I will turn on the tap and hold the spoon under. Ah! Oh, how could this happen? It's not fair! That's because you've got neural pathways that you've dug into canyons over time where your like screams are your natural response to like I a bit of a splash I have scoured those trenches like gouges I've eaten out of my own fingertips in anxiety. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Slip back into that groove so easily. Get into the groove. Here's the third point about how to fucking complain like a in psychopath. In a healthy fashion. Consider whether affirmation or some other strategy will work instead of complaining. Now, this to me, I have to say, seems like the kind of point where it's like, tips on not to get, how not to get angry, and it's just like, don't get angry. And I'm like, yes, yeah, fuck! Affirmation. So this is when I'm like, Josie, I noticed that a non-recyclable chip packet is in the recycling. <laughs> And you should respond with, that is very interesting, Alex. I take on board Thank you concerns. for bringing that to my attention. Instead of being like crumpling up in your face and taking a dump on your desk. <laughs> I suppose to just putting the headphones back on. That's what well, I do I'm now, like, isn't it? I'm just like, I can't. Time and time again! What are we going to turn them into? More chip packets? That's not how recycling works. A banana peel? Yeah. Uh, you're right to block it out, to be honest. I deserve to be ignored when well, I'm carrying on like that. Okay, so this is the fourth point, and I think this is where I'm coming to after 10 years of uh, being Putting a up with my uh, shit. heteronormative <laughs> relationship. <clears throat> Limit your exposure to complaining by limiting your exposure to complainers. So I just pop my headphones back on. Like, honestly, guys, if you can't hear your partner complaining, it's not happening, and it's not real, because you're perfect, and he doesn't know what's wrong with you. Our capacity to physically distance in this fine compound in which we're doing lockdown is not only a secret to our survival of stage four restrictions. I call it my love horse blinkers. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's integral to our survival yeah, as a couple for 10 years. You've got to have your alone yeah. time. Like, just yeah, like how we can spend eight hours a day in the same room, but not be in each other's space. And very occasionally we'll growl at each other like the cats when we crowd each other. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Don't you fucking hiss at me. <laughs> That's weird. It's a weird mouth shape. I can hiss in other ways, but I like that one. I like that one too. It's right out of size. So, in summary, complaining is annoying because it's super bad for you, but sometimes you just gotta do it. And if you're gonna do it, you should do it in the kind of ways where it's like super annoying and like, I don't know, positive somehow, even though fuck that and who could possibly Positive do functional complaints with practical applications to benefit your life. I mean, honestly, look, I'm not going to take on board any of that stuff. I'm glad I learned about it because it does make sense now why complaining annoys me. But I have a lot of empathy for complaining because I'm a complainer myself. So I wanted to end this episode by thinking about things that we love. So what is one thing that you love today? I love taking useful advice and pushing it to the side <laughs> and not putting it to work in my way. So I'm going to take this 
excellent advice for how to complain and I'm going to file it next to making my bed in the morning and sorting out my paperwork and keeping on top of my engagements and I'm just going to push it to the side and then two or three days from now I'm going to take great pleasure in having a bloody complaint about that fucking idiot, me, who's made my own life difficult. Oh, that's a beautiful sentiment. Joy. Let's leave this episode there. Like and subscribe or don't or just complain in the comments below. Have a good fucking whinge about a show you're not watching. Yeah. I know I will.